Hey everyone, there's another quick video, just want to bring you up to date with the latest changes in Salient OS, which is booting into the live image here. I am doing this in a VM just to make it easier for you to see what's going on. I'll just wait for this to come to the desktop. There we go, let's get rid of that message and Calamari is going to load up. Change that to English. Now, notably, you can see the i3 window manager, in this case, i3 caps and polybar have been added as an optional session for you. I'm just going to quickly go through this. I'm just going to keep the same partition structure. That'll be fine. I format that root and format the home partition now i'm not going to bore you with the installation itself so i'm just going to very quickly go through this and i will pause the video and come back when it's installed okay so this is just about done It's in fact removing calamari. It's not installing anything here. It's actually removing calamari. There goes the bootloader. And the file system, we're all done. All right, I'm gonna shut this down so I can remove the ISO. Let's remove that and then boot back in. There we go. And we'll go over the major changes that have happened in this latest release. And I'll walk over a little bit of the configuration that you made to do for yourself in the i3 session when we get there. As it's, uh, there's some very specific configuration that needs to be done if you'd like to use that side of it. So as you can see, this is the base look and feel now of Salient OS. This is how it's going to look out of the box. All the other desktops are still there, no need to panic. They're all there. I've just restructured them, reordered them. They're still there. Um, so, you know, feel free to apply whichever one you prefer. Uh, the icon theme has changed as well. We're now using the Teller icon theme. And Cougar Dark. That's the overall theme with Octodon Kuga as the window manager theme. So that all remains the same. Notably, under multimedia, now you'll notice that our door and its associated soft synths and support programs have been removed. Now, these are easy to put back in. I've just done this as a space saving exercise to reduce the ISO a bit, and that has helped. Um, what I'll do under the video description, I'll leave a link or the, de the description of how to install everything that was in here before um, using Yay. So obviously it's in some effects and a couple of the other plugins are AUR only. So everything else is the same, except for the addition of Optimus Manager and the underlying software. This should help with people with uh, Optimus Prime or Optimus um, laptops. So obviously you need to configure your NVIDIA driver first, and then you can use the Optimus system, and that should help in that regard, hopefully. So let's log out of this session. And we'll log into i3. As you see, it's a standard i3. I've just configured Polybar differently to how most people would do it. I, I like it this way for some reason. It is what it is. And as you can see, there's a little conky there just to help out initially because there's a, a couple of key bindings that have been changed specifically to my use case. The rest of it is pretty much standard i3. There's just a couple of things. So if you hover over the bar and the mouse changes to a hand 
That means that's a clickable item. So if I click on the clock, it expands to show you the day, the month, the year, for example. If you click on the date side, it will pop up a little calendar. This invokes um, PAMAC. Obviously that needs a refresh. So I'll give it a quick refresh. And then we'll see a list of files there. There we go. A quick look for updates. There's no updates to do. We're up to date. So this next one, the trash can, it will show you the number of items in the trash can. And if you click it, it will empty the trash can. Simple as that. Now, this module is a little bit of a bone of contention with me. It's still there at the moment, but I need to look at it because it's misreporting what is going on. If you can see the conky there, 355 meg out of essentially eight gig of RAM, which is what I gave this VM. And if I click on that, it's going to invoke HTOP. And as you can see, with the conky updates, there we go. The conky and HTOP are in sync with each other in terms of resource usage. This isn't. So that's just something I need to look at, just making you aware of it that you know you might think, well, what's going on here? There's like a 200 meg disc discrepancy here. Well, that's true, there, there is at the moment until I look at this module and see how it's working. The next one, obviously CPU usage, and this will show your cores and threads. This one, the audio, the scroller, you use your middle mouse wheel to scroll this up and down. If you click, it will mute. If you click again, it will unmute. If you click on the speaker, it will invoke power view control. Now this one is just an indicator to let me know I'm on a wired connection. The lock screen will not work in a VM, but I can show you that in action. So if I do better lock screen dash u user share background. So and I'll give it the exact image that's being used as the desktop background just to speed that process up. Otherwise it will randomly pick um, an image out of the backgrounds folder. So it was going to have to randomly go through there, pick one, and then apply what it needs to for that to work. So if I have a quick look in the cache, we should see i3 lock. There we do. And those are the images that is just generated for the lock screen. Now, as I said, that won't work in a VM, but I can demonstrate it by invoking it directly with B lock, better lock screen. There you go. Enter the password and that brings you back in. The power state. This is a power state button, obviously. If I go to shut down, it's going to switch and give me a cancel and shut down. So you don't accidentally come in and go reboot. If you didn't mean to, you have to implicitly say, yes, I want to reboot. And the same with shut down. Yes, I want to shut down. It's just a toggle switch. You can change the logic of that in the config. It's very easy. And we've got uh, Network Manager applet there as well. So the base modifier keys, which is the super key or Windows key, mod T will open a terminal, as will mod enter. That state remains the same. I haven't changed that. That is the default I3. But I've, if I've added mod shift T to open one in floating mode, Mod shift space will toggle between tiled and floating. Mod shift F to bring up the file manager. Mod Q will close the currently focused window. So mod Q will close that window. If I wanted to move a window to another workspace, I'd do mod shift and the workspace number. That's now been moved to workspace two, as you can see by the indicator up there. That's now on number two. If I go back to one and invoke the file manager and then go back to two, you can see those workspaces remain because there is content in them. And that's the way i3 works. It creates and destroys workspaces as they're needed. Very efficient way of working. Mod backslash will invoke Chromium. Just going to change that to use GTK so it's darker. 
and mod shift backspace will invoke Firefox. Mod G, so if I open some terminals, let's do a vertical split. There we go. If I do mod G, that will toggle gaps on and off. Uh, workspace normal, mod one through zero, one to zero or one to 10 is your workspaces. Uh, some applications have been explicitly set in the config to always open on a specific workspace, so multimedia and photography, things like that, they'll go on a specific workspace. And you'll see, I think I could demonstrate that. If I open up the file manager and let's go to the config, so I've got to show you something in the polybar config anyway. Okay, so that's opened up on workspace one. Let's go to workspace two. Let's open, well, we want two anyway. Let's say, let's open up the i3 config and look at the status indicator at the top there. It's gone bright orange to let you know that that file has been passed through to workspace one into Sublime Text. So you get, it's an urgency indicator basically to show you something has changed in that workspace. So this is the polybar config and there's only a couple of things you need to be aware of here. These are all the modules that you can use and you can see here, this is where they're added. So modules left is the i3 indicators and MPD if you're running it, the Empire Demon, um, date and time in the middle and the right modules is check updates, trash, file system, memory, CPU, volume, wired to, I could put WLAN in there as well. Um, obviously you're gonna to have to source your device for that to work properly. I'll show you in a second how to do that. I could also add weather here, for example, and that will give me a weather for my location. And you also need to change the configuration of the weather.py file for your city location and your open weather API key, which you would have to obtain to get the weather module working for you. I'll go through that in a second, but don't worry. So for example, if I add temperature here, if I spell it properly, temperature, we're not gonna see anything because that doesn't work in a VM, as simple as that but there is a configuration change that needs to happen for you because like I said, it depends on your CPU and thermal zones, how they work for your CPU and motherboard. It's different for everybody. In this case, the thermal zone I've chosen is zero and this is the hardware mon path that I've chosen to use for this, but it won't work in a VM. So to get your thermal zone, copy this, and paste it into a terminal. Now there's not going to be anything returned because it, it doesn't work in a VM. All right, but what you would normally see is a series of, you would see thermal zone zero, thermal zone one, thermal zone two, thermal, thermal zone three, for example. That gives you the zone you would like to use. And then you run this next command in the terminal again. And that will output, you know, you're not gonna see this because obviously we're in a, a VM, so it's not going to work on the hardware, it does work. And that will list the different paths available for each zone type. So you choose your thermal zone and enter that number there from zero to three normally. And then you would choose the path for the zone you've chosen. So each of these two sets of commands will give you the thermal zone and the path to the zone you wish to use. And then the temperature will show up here. That's how that works. Under the weather module, uh, that's a separate configuration, which is this one, weather.py, which is inside your config polybar folder. It uses open weather map. So you have to go to open weather map, search for your city, and you'll be given 
a city code. You'll see that in the address bar. But you would have to sign up and get your own API key. This is my API key. So it's only going to work for me. So once you get your city tag or whatever they call it, pop that into there, add your API key in there, and then the weather module will work for you. No problems. So I've tried to keep the configuration file as clean as possible. As you can see, I've divided each section. You know, for laptops, you can add backlight. So where the module name is and the name that follows it, that is what you would include up here. If you wanted to see the backlight menu, you would just type the space and add backlight. So for each module, you'll see module slash name. And that is how you add it to the bar at the top. So there we have the WLAN there. So obviously with WLAN, you have to get your device's name. And the way you would do that is either if config, probably the easiest way. And you can see my ethernet is ENP0S3, um, but I'm using a little bit of a script here to pull that. So it's getting the IP route and it's grabbing the default interface for the wired connection. So that doesn't make any difference. You don't need to know that one, but for the wireless, you do need to know that. And obviously in a VM, there is no wireless available at the moment in this. So you, you know, you, open the terminal, run if config, and you will see your wireless interface's name. Just put that in there, and then WLAN will work here. So you'll see the wireless status up here. With all of these configurations, tiling window managers, there's always a little bit of work to do for your own use case, your own hardware. Um, it's different for everybody, so I've just left it as default as possible. So you just have to change a couple of configuration files for yourself. Other than that, your standard i3 with the themed polybar. Everything else works exactly the same as standard normal i3, except I'm not using the i3 status bar. We're using polybar instead, and it's at the top. If you want to put it at the bottom, you can do that. You just change it in the configuration file. Mod D invokes Rofi. It used to be D menu, which is why it's Mod D, but I've changed it over to Rofi. You can change that easily in the configuration file if you don't want it to be Rofi. You can change it back to D menu. Let's just move that to another workspace. And let's enable our syntax highlighting. There we go, it's here. So if you want D menu to run instead, you just uh, uncomment those and recomment those two. And that's it and then save that config, reload i3, and then you'll have D menu instead. But I prefer Rofi. So if I save that and do a mod shift R, that will reload the config. And we're good to go. Just look back to there. So mod D brings up Rofi. So that's pretty much it in terms of the... Uh, the i3 configuration and polybar configuration. If you have any problems, let me know in the comments below or on the SourceForge the discussion or ticket system. You can raise a ticket if there's a proper issue. If not, you can use the discussion tab or in the comments below the video, as I said. So I'm going to log out of here. So that's mod shift E. And that'll let me log out of here. I'm going to go back to the XFCE session. And we'll see, there we go. And now we're back into XFCE. So that's it for this video. Just wanted to highlight the major changes. As I said, I will leave the installation instructions. If you want Ardor and associated soft synths back in, you can do that. I've just removed them to try and save space on the ISO a little bit and not to clutter it up a bit too much. Now. It, everything seems more relevant to just gaming and streaming. Um, even though real-time audio is still enabled, you're still going to get decent audio. That's all available still, so that should all be good. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you all 
in the next video. Thank you very much.